to the church today is that we need to close the gates of hell. Amen. 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 Turn your Bibles with me over to Matthew chapter 16. You guys know where I'm going here. If you know your Bibles well, I know you do. You know where I'm going here today. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 16. We're going to read that. And then we're going to expose some things here. And, and tell you some things about closing the gates of hell. Amen. Praise God. The gates of hell that Jesus spoke about are literal access points of spiritual entities that want to come in and invade your territory. Are you hearing me? Read it in your Bible as we read it. He doesn't say the gate of hell. He says the gates of hell. Kingdoms, as you read through <laughs> Bible literature, you find that kingdoms usually had gates of entry into the city. Jerusalem, I was there not too long ago. It literally has several gates around the city that, that permit you entrance into Jerusalem. The city gates. And they have lookout points. They have watchmen on the tower that sit at sentry. And they watch for the invading armies that may come. <coughs> They're watching for the invading armies. They recognize the invading armies. This is something that the church needs to wake up to. Yeah. This is something in the day that we're in today where we need to be more aware of that there are invading armies that are approaching your territory that they have no right to. Amen. And God has put it within your power to close the gates. Amen. Whenever the sentry saw the invading armies come, the alarm went up and the first thing they did was they lowered the gates. They shut the gates. Church today, as God is ready to propel you into a greater experience in Him than you've ever had in your life, a greater potential, a greater opportunity of service for the King of Kings, God wants you to know that He has put it into your power today to shut the gates. We have the power to close the gates of hell. How many today, praise God, have had enough of the enemy's attacks? Today, praise God, wants to close some things down on the enemy and not let him intrude upon the territory that God has given you anymore. He just said, thank you, Lord, I'm ready. Hallelujah. Okay, Matthew 16, beginning in verse 13. Look at this with me. It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell. Look at that with me one more time. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. I'm going to use that, uh, that 18th verse. Let's read it again. And I say also to thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'm going to use that as my subject and my thought today. As I preach to you with the Lord's help, the thought of closing the gates of hell. Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Father, today we're so thankful for your presence that we have felt so powerful in our midst. We thank you for your people that you love with an everlasting love. We thank you, God, for your word that has given precious promise of victory to those of us who believe. And we thank you, Lord God, for today. Because this is the day that you have made. It is a day of rejoicing. And we will rejoice. And be glad in it. Take this word, Holy Spirit. And anoint my heart and my lips. Use me, Lord, as your instrument today. Hide me behind the cross. That this word, this message is not mine. 
but God, that it is yours. That your people will hear it as a word from God, receive it into their hearts, and help them, Lord God, to activate it and use it for their benefit to close the gates of hell. This we pray in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to start out this morning very quickly by saying that in the context here, we find that Jesus was in the coast of Caesarea Philippi. When he asked his disciples, he said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? I thank God for the church. I want to say again, thank you so much Amen. for your, liber your liberality to me as your pastor. When you rose up and sent me to Israel in November, last part of November, December, what a blessing that has become in my life. Amen. I, I was thrilled to go, but I'm more thrilled now to know that I've gone because it has been such a benefit in my life to be able to be there. Amen. The Word of God has become more real to me now than it ever was before I was able to go there. There are things that I can relate to and see and understand now that I could not have understood before without being there. And this is one of those instances. Because I was at Caesarea, I was at Caesarea Philippi. I was able to see what the conditions were there. And there's a lot of stuff that is happening in between the lines here that you would not know and I would not know unless I would have been there for myself. Caesarea Philippi was a place of horrific polytheism, horrific idol worship. It was a place where the Greeks, 300 years prior to the time of Christ, had developed a grotto, a place where they actually did human sacrifice to the god Pan. Oh, you know the god Pan. You you probably don't think you do, but you've seen him a lot. The god Pan is the half goat, half man yeah. with the flute that is playing. That is the god Pan. He is a god of fear and torment. And because of the fear and fright that he put over the people that were so superstitious and so uh, polytheistic in their worship, because of their fear and their fright, they would literally offer human sacrifice in this cave, this grotto, this, this uh, hollowed out place where it was a deep ravine, crevice, where water was at. And they would throw human sacrifice, child sacrifice, into this place, hopefully to appease the god Pan. That is where we get the word panic from. And as you go beyond this grotto, there are niches in the, in, the, in the mountainside. There's niches, three or four niches there, where they set up these other deity gods, supposedly, as far as they were concerned, and set them up in their places in these little niches in the cave as they offered their worship and sacrifice to these gods. And all of these little demon gods were prevalent in the time that Jesus showed up. There were still a lot of people worshiping God that didn't know what they were worshiping. And Jesus shows up and it brings his disciples to the coast of Caesarea Philippi. And he begins to ask his disciples in the backdrop of all of this falseness, False gods that are really aren't gods, but are more demons than anything else. He brings his disciples on the backdrop of this picture. And he says, who do men say that I am? You've got Pan here. You've got all of these nymphs over here. And who do men say that I am? See, Pan was a very, not only was he God of friend, but he's a very <clears throat> dirty, filthy god. He was a god of lust, a god of sensuality, a god of sex. Hold your ears, you little ones. There was a highlighting of that, and these little nymphs, what they were called, were these little demon, female, lustuous type female gods, where we get our word nymphomaniac from. Are you hearing me? I'm here to 
kill something today. I'm here to tell you we have dominion and authority over all the power of the enemy. If you're bound by a sexual addiction or pornography, or you're caught in an illicit affair right now, you can be set free before this service is over. If you're bound by those things, you don't have to be bound by those things. And do not let your passions run wild. One of the first things that will happen to a person that is saved, there'll be a sexual influence that want to come by and try to draw you away. Women surrounding you and trying to get you to like them. I know what I'm talking about. Be careful. Watch out. The devil doesn't like the fact that you've given your heart to God. And so the spirit of lust, if you don't know, then you're just plain ignorant. And I say that in a nice way. It's scriptural. It's, that's, that's Bible. Paul said that they want to be ignorant, let them be ignorant. But what I'm saying, if you're not aware of the fact of the unleashing of the sexual drive and behavior that's in this world today, you don't have a clue. You don't even watch a TV. Thank God, if you're not watching TV, good. Maybe, maybe you're shielded, but you can't turn anywhere without seeing that demon's head rise up. It's in the commercials. And this was the God Pan. He had sexual appetite and, and had his way with all of these nymphs, they were called. And it was a, a it was a huge oppression over that area. And Jesus shows up with, with his disciples to break the curse. Jesus shows up with his disciples to break the hold. Jesus brings his disciples on the backdrop of all of that. And he says, who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? And the first thing we need to do in order to close the gates of hell, we need to have a personal revelation for ourselves who Christ is. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. I want you to know you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Or you'll get bound up. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Or you may get sucked back in. Because once you're saved, the battle's on. Once you give your heart to God, it is an all-out fight. The enemy's going to throw everything he has against your life to stop you from going forward to God. Can somebody say amen? amen? Oh, I know the devil's mad and doesn't like this. But you guys need to back this up today because... It's going to set you free. And so he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they start responding and they say, some say that you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elias, and others Jeremiah and one of the prophets. One of the spirits that need to be killed today is the spirit of comparison. Amen. 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 Well, I don't know why she gets to lead the worship. I can sing as good as her. I can flow with the spirit better than she can. <laughs> Let's let this settle in. Come on. <coughs> you don't think that's real? You're deceived. You're wrong. It raises its ugly head in church all the time. The spirit of comparison. Well, I don't know why they have to sing those kinds of songs. I like the old songs. Those songs are good. I'm not saying nothing wrong with the old songs. But that's a spirit of comparison. We mess up when we cannot worship God and celebrate the fact that souls are being saved, souls are being delivered, and souls are being healed because I didn't like the song. And I'm guilty of myself. Sometimes I say, Katie, I don't like it. I told you, I didn't like that song. But we need to identify the 